They arrive without warning. Government eradication teams descend on a remote area of Peru. Their target, a field of coca, the raw ingredient of cocaine. This one crop has taken a huge toll, not only on Americans, but on the Peruvians who grow it. Just ask Daniel Cardenas. Violence was common. It was just violence. I saw the bodies on the streets all the time. Coca brings easy money, and with it, murder and prostitution and extortion. People live in the shadows, suspicious and afraid. The drug cartels control the streets and impose strict curfews. My mother and father went outside and they were captured one evening. They were taken because they were disobeying an order. I was four years old. It was the last time I saw them. Daniel's family continued growing coca. It was all they knew. Then one day, in this region called San Martin, those eradication teams arrived. A pivotal moment for families, for whole communities. They get to a question, what are you going to do next? One of the things that's nice about this program is we don't tell them what to do next. We ask them. With the local farmers assembled, USAID, the U.S. Agency for International Development, describes a clear alternative, offering them help with different crops and a better life. They're frightened. It's tearful because they're leaving something behind. They're leaving the security behind that they had from this income that came from the coca bush. But first, each farmer is asked to come forward and sign a pledge. The point of the pledge is to create a defining moment when they have officially agreed to let the coca go. When everything up to that moment and everything after that moment changes. And what a change. For almost a decade now, USAID has been helping farmers switch from coca to the crop of their choice. Coffee or pineapple or oil palm. And especially to this, cacao, the root of chocolate, a highly profitable and native plant. The biggest change in our lives came from this alternative development program. They did everything they promised, and we are very grateful. The project taught farmers the best seeds to use, the proper shade trees to plant and where, how to prune the cacao trees and harvest the crop. The project showed them how to ferment the beans and dry them for days at a time. But perhaps its biggest contribution was creating profound social change, helping farmers overcome all those years of suspicion and isolation. In this community, yes, we as a community are very unified. We work together. If there is something that needs to be done, we all join in to help. Soon, they were creating their own profit-making cooperatives. The farmers, tens of thousands in all, began selling their cacao beans to Italy and Switzerland, Holland and the United States. Exports generating $36 million a year. They set up their own factories to process the beans themselves into a chocolate of delicate texture and intense flavor that's earning top prize at international competitions. In all, this alternative development program has helped double the average household income in the area, double the amount of cacao grown in Peru, and replace 35,000 acres of coca with legal crops. La gente, eh, ha tenido the people had a vision. It was a vision of development. And however successful the project may be, it's because the people took it on as their own. It's the people who will continue this. With the drug cartels gone from this region, there's a new sense of security. Tourists are now flocking to the area in what some call the miracle of San Martin. We are full of pride that this community, which is small and humble, has some of the best chocolate in the world. The project has changed life a great deal. We have come so far, 
we have come out of the shadows 